Welcome to our service for the 28th of June, and particularly welcome if you've started joining us since we've been on YouTube. You can find out more about us or contact us via the website stthomastrowbridge.org or simply search for St Thomas's Church, Trowbridge. Following this week's government announcements, I'm sure many of you will want to know when and how we can open this building and others like it again for public worship. Although this will technically be possible from next Sunday, we need a bit more time to study the guidance and put everything in place. So please bear with us just a little bit longer and as soon as we safely can, we will open these doors again. Now over to Beth to find out how that paper chain we began two weeks ago is coming along. So lots of you have now watched the service from the 14th of June and have seen that I've asked you to send in a slip of paper with your name on and a gift that you have that you can offer to the church and to the world around us. And um, as you can see, it's getting pretty long. We've got lots of gifts on our chain so far, things like people that are caring, encouraging, good at sharing, good leaders, good at teaching, so many different things that just goes to show that our church is full of diversity and different people that can offer different things. So if you still haven't sent me anything, please do email me or send a strip of paper to the vicarage with your name and your gift on. It would be great to see if we can get the whole church involved just to really show how we are all important in the body of the church. This week's collect is one of the great prayers of Anglican liturgy, packed full of truth. So let's savour these words as we begin our worship together. Let's pray. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus, 
Jesus, the only one that could ever save me. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. give thanks to you for you are the Lord our God and God of our ancestors forever and all time. You are the rock of our lives, shield of our salvation from generation to generation and we will thank you and declare your praise for our lives which are entrusted into your hand, our souls which are placed in your charge for your miracles which are with us every day and for your wonders and favours at all times, in the evening, in the morning and at noonday. You are good for your compassion never fails. You are compassionate, for your loving kindnesses never cease, and we have always placed our hope in you. And Father, on this new day, we thank you that we can come before you with thankful hearts, that we are able to meet with you in the ways that we are at the moment, with the new to us. Where would we be in this lockdown without Zoom and Skype and FaceTime? We thank you, Lord, for creating these means of meeting for such a time as this. And we hear so much about statistics. But we thank you, Lord God, that we are not a statistic to you. We're not just a number to be added and subtracted. We're not even a name in a little black book. Although you know each one of us by name, we are the apple of your eye and we are special to you. We thank you, Father, that you are the all-knowing God. You know all about the coronavirus and its effects. You know how long it will last and what we need to do to avoid being infected. We ask you to grant wisdom to the government and scientists as they endeavour to work out how best to come out of lockdown so that the economy of the country can start up again. And may each one of the population heed the advice given and not risk the country going into a second spike. The world is in turmoil with more and more people succumbing to coronavirus And we bring before you those who live in poverty. No decent facilities, no clean water, no nourishing food and no up to date health care. Father, in your mercy, would you meet their needs, would you protect them and enable the sending of supplies to them? How blessed we are here in the UK and we ask your forgiveness for taking for granted and complaining about what we have. We give to you, Lord, each one of those. Who have not. Turn our hearts back to you, our Father, and help us to repent of our ways. Help us to look to you 
author and finisher of our faith. We are your children and you are our Father. May we do your bidding and not our own. May we do to others as we would have done to ourselves. May we not turn away when we see a need. May we give that glass of water, that sandwich that will sustain. May we show and tell of the love of Jesus and all that he did in the shedding of his blood, the dying on the cross and then being raised from the dead for each and every one of mankind. We bring before you the persecuted church and in particular at this time, Pastor Nadakani in Iran and the others of his church who've been given another long prison sentence. Lord, may their example be a conviction in the eyes of their jailers, turning their hearts toward you. We thank you, Lord God, that the food bank was untouched by the flash flood which damaged the ceilings in the Spark Hill Food Bank warehouse in Birmingham. We pray for swift reparation of the damage with no hindrance to the distribution of food to those in need. Bless our Queen and her family. May she long continue to reign over us. And we thank you, Lord, that in her serving her people, she is serving you. And for those among us who are unwell, Lord, we bring before all of those from our extended families. You are the Lord, our healer, and we ask that you heal those among us who need that specific touch from you. We give to you the well-being of those who work on the front line. Nurses and doctors and post persons and refuse collectors, shop workers and delivery drivers. So many, Lord, that we depend upon. Bless each one, we pray. And we thank you, Lord, for Alan and the others who bring us your word. We thank you for our community here. We have church. Yet we are the church. You have shown us how to meet and Lord, we are grateful for all of the groups that have managed to meet via technology. It has been proven that we can be church outside the walls of a building. Nonetheless, we look to the day when we can meet again in the flesh. And finally, Lord, in giving you honour and glory and praise, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem in accordance with your word. We thank you for the land of Israel that land that you gave to your chosen people and for Yeshua, born and lived as a Jew, came that we may all have eternal life with you. And we say, come Lord Jesus, in all your glory and all your power. Amen. Oh, 
taken from Romans chapter 6 verses 12 to 23. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that, though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness. When you are slaves to sin, you are free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I mentioned earlier that today's collect is one of my favourites. It uses powerful imagery of slavery and freedom to describe what Jesus Christ has done for us. Once you were slaves, now you are free. Once you were ruled by tyrant sin, now you live in the glorious liberty of the children of God. So, in gratitude, offer yourselves to God as his willing servants. Some people are talking about the relaxation of lockdown as a kind of freedom. For most of us, that's a bit over the top. It's not as if we've been in prison for the last three months. But for some who live alone and haven't been going out, isolation, loneliness and anxiety have felt oppressive and even imprisoning. And being able to meet others again will be a huge help. But this collect is speaking about a more profound kind of liberation from sin, death, sickness, poverty, 
injustice, destructive patterns of thought and behavior. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free, St. Paul says in Galatians. There could hardly be a more potent contrast between slavery and freedom, tyranny and liberty. All the more so now when the Black Lives Matter movement has reminded us that the legacy of slavery lingers on nearly 200 years since it was legally abolished in this country. Racial attitudes and stereotypes that were used to justify slavery remain and the struggle for complete freedom and justice is still going on two centuries later. I saw a powerful video this week of Nottingham Forest midfielder John Bostock, who has suffered racial abuse himself, talking about recent events. He was saying that while we must fight the evil of racism, we need to recognize it's a symptom of an even, deep, even deeper disease of the human heart, sin which affects the whole human race and can ultimately only be defeated by love, the supreme act of love Jesus showed by dying for us on the cross. He puts it better than that, so I'll send out the link with this service and would encourage you to watch that video. Today's collect also reminds us that the struggle for racial freedom and equality is part of an even bigger cosmic struggle. The whole creation is groaning to be set free and we're part of it. We groan too, Paul says, to be fully free from sin and all its consequences, disease, death, physical weakness, mental distress, social injustice, environmental disaster, and all the troubles and sorrows of life in a messed up world. The glorious liberty of the children of God is his desire for his whole creation and the whole human race. It's as big as that. We know that we've been set free and we're thankful to God for every example of that freedom in our own lives. But we're also painfully aware that we're still groaning, as Paul puts it, for our full liberation. Let me draw out two practical consequences of that. Celebrate your freedom and find your place in the ongoing struggle for liberation. Celebrate your freedom and find your place in the ongoing struggle for liberation. Firstly then, celebrating our freedom. We may not be completely free yet, but hopefully we can all think of something that God has set us free from. An illness God healed you from. A bad habit he's helped you to overcome. A negative pattern of thinking he helped you change. A fear that no longer troubles you like it used to. A relationship that has been mended. We have short memories and easily forget what God has done for us. The people of Israel constantly needed to be reminded that they were once slaves in Egypt, but now were God's free people living in his promised land. And we too sometimes need to make that conscious effort to remember something that God has done to set us free, the ways that we've experienced his liberation in our own lives and to thank him for that. There's a famous viewpoint in Scotland called rest and be thankful. It's at the highest point of a mountain pass where travellers would literally sit and be thankful that they'd completed the steep climb. It wasn't the end of the journey, but it was a good place to rest and take stock and realise just how far you'd come. 
Our freedom in Christ is a bit like that, a progressive, ongoing journey. And it's good to stop and thank God regularly for how far we've come. So this week, rest, because this freedom is a gift of God's grace, not something we have to work for. And be thankful. Be thankful that he's setting you free, step by step. And secondly, find your part in the ongoing struggle for liberation. God's work of setting the whole creation free from decay is breathtakingly big. None of us can begin to do it all, but we can all discover the part that God has called and equipped us to do. The thing that we are emotionally, in personality, in our spiritual gifting, best suited and prepared to do. Some of you will be gifted as evangelists, able to bring the good news of salvation and freedom to others. For some, that same desire is expressed in supporting overseas worldwide mission. Others will be passionate about justice, the big issues of racial, economic, social justice, fair trade, and the environment, or more local issues of homelessness, food poverty, and addiction. Still others are called to proclaim God's freedom by caring for those who suffer the effects of a broken creation, physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. My advice to myself and to you is don't condemn yourself over what you're not able to do, but rather excel at the part God has called and equipped you to play. That's what the colic means by dedicating our freedom to God's service. Paul goes even further and suggests we become slaves to God and righteousness. But this is a totally different kind of slavery, offered voluntarily in love and gratitude to God for setting us free. The old type of slavery brings nothing but hard labor and results in death. This new kind brings ever-increasing freedom and results in eternal life. As another of our colleagues says, God's service is perfect freedom. I just love that phrase. Slavery is an evil which has repercussions lasting hundreds of years. We're all still suffering the legacy of the most ancient enslavement of all. But now, because of Jesus, we can offer ourselves to God, whose service is perfect freedom. In the ongoing struggle for liberation, God gives us his armor to wear. Here's another take on the armor of God in Ephesians and another example of the riches of our Christian heritage, part of a prayer called St. Patrick's Breastplate, an eighth century Celtic prayer named after a fifth century Irish saint and translated by a 19th century English hymn writer. You can find the text along with the collect on this week's weekly news. The whole prayer is amazing, but it is a bit long. However, if it grabs you, look the whole thing up. Just search for St. Patrick's Breastplate, or I bind unto myself today. So let's pray these words together, putting on the armour of God as we struggle for the freedom that Jesus has already won for us by dying on the cross. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three. I bind this day to me forever by power of faith, Christ's incarnation, 
his baptism in the Jordan River, his death on cross for my salvation, his bursting from the spiced tomb, his riding up the heavenly way, his coming at the day of doom, I bind unto myself today. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me. Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity by invocation of the same the three in one, and one in three. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, found through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, He took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, His gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. In the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness lay, then bursting forth in glorious day, out from the grave he rose again, and as he stands a victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever block me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. There in the power of no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever block me from his hand till he returns or oh, calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. 